Greetings YouTube, it's JC Bad at Pro with another video about audio and this time around we're going to talk about one of my favorite things, Dolby Noise Reduction. I've been fascinated with Dolby Noise Reduction ever since I started to get into audio and recording back in the late 70s. It seemed like magic to me back then and I didn't quite understand how it worked. Over the years I've learned a lot about Dolby Noise Reduction and it's still kind of magic to me even though I know how it works now. I thought it would be cool to take some time and break it down a little bit and uh, try and uh, kind of simplify things so that uh, if you are getting into analog tape and you're wondering what that little switch does, here is a, a basic breakdown of how it works. Dolby noise reduction was developed in the late 60s. Ray Dolby is the fellow who invented it. He was uh, instrumental in developing the original 2-inch quad videotape format used in television stations and TV networks from the 50s all the way up until the 80s when it was replaced by 1-inch and then later on digital. Cassettes in particular suffer from high noise. They require a lot of equalization due to their 32nd of an inch tracks for each channel and their slow tape speed of 1 and 7 eighths IPS to bring the high frequencies up into balance with the mids and the lows. And this equalization tends to accentuate noise in a frequency band from around 3 to 6 kilohertz. Unfortunately, most people's ears are most sensitive to frequencies between 3 and 6 kilohertz, so cassettes seem to be particularly noisy, especially when recording highly dynamic music like classical or uh, light acoustic or even a room full of people just talking. So how does Dolby Noise Reduction help to reduce this noise? Well, if you look at this diagram, you'll see that Basically what happens is audio is fed to the tape deck and the first thing it hits after it gets into the tape deck is the Dolby encoder. In Dolby B noise reduction what this encoder tries to do is it raises the level of the audio in a band of frequencies from about 4 kilohertz on up to 10 kilohertz by 10 dB. Now this accentuated audio is then recorded onto the cassette when you play back a Dolby encoded cassette and you switch the Dolby noise reduction on, there is a decoder that lowers those originally accentuated frequency by the same amount that they were boosted on the recording side. What this does, of course, is returns the dynamics of the original audio back to where they should be, and in the process of doing that, it lowers the noise by 10 dB. Since the original recording has the high frequencies boosted, more detail of what is in that band is recorded on the tape since it's recorded above the noise. And when it's played back, even though those frequencies are put back to their original levels as they were in the original recording, you still are able to hear more detail because the original recording was above the noise. Very cool, huh? So exactly how does it do that? Well. You couldn't just boost the uh, high frequencies by 10 dB on the recording side and expect that when you played them back that they would be all right because, of course, whenever the orchestra got loud or the cymbals crashed in a rock band, if they were boosted by 10 dB, they would saturate the tape and cause a lot of distortion and splatter. So, what Dolby Noise Reduction does is it uses something called a compander. A compander boosts audio below a certain point. But as the input signal gets louder and passes that point, it doesn't do anything at all. You can take a device known as an expander and tune it to where it works in concert with the compander. So as the compander boosts on one end, the expander lowers on the other end and the original dynamics of the audio stay the same even though uh, the audio has been companded and expanded. That's a pretty basic system, and it would actually actually reduce the noise. But the problem is, is that if you used a basic compander and expander, what would happen is, is that any time you had a particularly quiet section, and let's say somebody was playing a triangle or a guitar very quietly with a lot of high frequency material in it, every time that they would do that, you would hear a rush up of noise behind it.
Dolby gets around this by using a thing called a sliding compander or a sliding filtered compander. In other words, if you had input audio that was just a kick drum with nothing over top of it and no high frequency content to speak of, you would get the full 10 dB of companding. On playback, you would get the full 10 dB of expansion. But if your input audio had uh, like cymbals crashing or the sound of a rock band, you know, with lots of screaming guitars, the Dolby noise reduction system would slide a filter up to the dominant frequency in the signal and no compounding would be done below that frequency. This filter slides from 300 Hertz all the way up to 20,000 Hertz. So in effect, if the signal is loud enough to mask the noise anyway at a particular frequency, no processing is being done. The same thing happens in the decoder. There's a sliding filter there too, but it slides in the other direction. So that's basically how Dolby B noise reduction works. Now there are other forms of uh, noise reduction available. You can have Dolby C on a cassette. That was introduced in 1980. You can have Dolby S and you can have Dolby SR on a professional machine. And the differences basically in the noise reduction systems are that Dolby C in particular expands what Dolby B does and adds a second band of frequencies that are companded and expanded, a second sliding filter working at different levels, and all of this works together to affect a 20 dB reduction in noise, which is uh, more than Dolby B. So how do you get the best out of Dolby B noise reduction? Well, here's a couple of tips for you. First, use good tape. Don't attempt to use Dolby B noise reduction on cheap cassettes with low output. It just won't work properly. That input signal needs to be as close to the output signal as possible, or vice versa. So you want to use good tape. Make test recordings. Make a test recording of a tape before you actually uh, start recording like the whole CD or album or whatever. Ensure that the tape and the tape deck are working together properly and that the sound is good. When you make your test recordings using Dolby Noise Reduction, try using different input levels. Maybe do one recording with it peaking at minus two and then another one at zero, and then another one at plus two or plus three. See which one sounds the best, and then make your recording according to uh, whatever level sounded the best. While you're making your recording, watch your levels. Make sure that you don't overdrive the tape. Keep it peaking right up around zero. Avoid Dolby C noise reduction. Dolby C noise reduction is just very sensitive to changes in the output, and it can be just the slightest change that causes it to mistrack. So I avoid it. I use Dolby B noise reduction on normal cassettes. I tend to not use Dolby noise reduction on Type 2 or Type 4 metal tapes. It's really not necessary. The formulations in uh, chrome tapes and metal tapes are very quiet to begin with. Plus, the different equalization curve used, 70 microseconds to be precise, is quieter than the 120 microsecond preemphasis used on normal tape. Type 2 and Type 4 cassettes are usually about 6 to 8 dB quieter than normal tape. Since Dolby B noise reduction gives you a 10 dB decrease in noise, it's not that much different when uh, compared to a normal tape that has been encoded and decoded with Dolby. And also, chrome tapes tend to do much better on the high frequencies than normal tapes do. And uh, since they have those high frequencies, any noise that uh, would be on the tape is pretty well masked. So there you have it. It's my little video about Dolby noise reduction. Don't be afraid to flip that switch. Experiment, play around, and make some quiet tapes. Thanks for watching.